Hi guys, it's Fertis here. So really, really exciting news that PureF has brought out a second version. There's really cool features that they've added. For those that aren't familiar, PureF is a really good reference checking utility for artists or anyone looking at references. I've certainly used it over the last 10 years working in the games industry. So I definitely suggest coming to pureref.com and downloading. You can either pay a donation or download it for free. With standard PureF, you have the ability to move this window around add different images and basically zoom across them. You can use the arrow keys to scroll back and forth, which is really useful and space to zoom in and out. So it's a really good navigation system. They offer really unique ways to organize your images. So say, for example, you've collected loads of references and you want to pack them together. You can box select them and press control P. So it packs them all into one nice space. And these are all different sizes, which can sometimes be frustrating. So if you press control and alt up on the arrow keys, it's going to scale them all to the same size and then you can combine that with a control P. So how we use this in the games industry when we're working on stuff, say for example, I'm working on hair in Unreal Engine. We might have loads of hair references. You can right click and change this window to be always on top. So come to mode and then always on top. The hotkey is control shift A for that as well. So then you can use your normal windows and then continuously come back to here to basically navigate through your references. So before I show you my absolute favorite update in this and sort of how you can utilize that, it's a big game changer for game artists, especially if you're studying anatomy and movement and animation and things like that. The first thing you want to do is probably consolidate all your different pure ref files onto one file because there's a new hierarchy and grouping system. So in the past, I would have been a little bit difficult, but with these features, it's very nice. So I've got four different pure ref files here, and it's quite simply the case of box selecting them all, control C, Control V into the new scene and you'll see that it's pasting. On the other window, it actually says copying. And it's not just pasting the images, it's actually collecting all the formats from the individual files. So they're pure F specific, which is really good. You can then move these around and rescale them. Right off the bat, if it came from a different file, you can now press Control G and that's gonna group it into its own unique group. So potentially if you want to sort of like organize this, I suggest getting all your pure Fs. Maybe you've got things like legs, hands if you're doing anatomy studies, putting those into groups. Nice thing about these boxes is that you can lock them and you can also change their color. So when you're lost in a sea of references, sometimes it can be nice to have a little color system. So for example, with the torso, I can assign that to a red or a green. And what could be nice, I could have a mannequin off to the side and then the torso would be green. So it'd be a really easy way to basically cross reference and find very specific sets of anatomy. So with this new grouping system, you'll probably have a lot of new references that are coming in. So it can get a little bit chaotic. Uh, thankfully, what they've done is they've added a hierarchy system. So if you press control J, it's gonna bring up a load of lists of the actual assets and also any text that you bring in. So it uses the file format name. As you see, there's a lot of untitled here. I assume that artists will have a lot of untitled images. The best thing about the hierarchy system is that you can find the groups that you made and then name them. So for example, here it's just denoted as note, the one we pasted in. So if you press F2, we can rename this as something like torso. And if you really want to do, you can come into each individual picture and then rename them and also rename all the text. If you want to full screen this and focus on it, say you're going through a little anatomy section, you can press control F. So I'm really rushing through these because I want to show you the next feature, which is really awesome. But before that, I'm going to show you a really cool quality of life improvement, especially for educators. So at university, I'll be giving feedback to a lot of students. And often with the PureF file, I'll have to copy and paste that off, put it into Photoshop so I can draw on top of it. So thankfully, those features have now been brought into PureF 2.0. So if you have control D, you then get access to draw on top. Maybe you want to annotate things or maybe you're in a meeting and you can just discuss concepts and highlight certain areas maybe highlight some anatomy. So in the bottom left, you can change the color of this and mix up things like the opacity so it's not uh, affecting the underlying references too much. You have the basic functionality. So for example, like changing the thickness and always remember that that's also gonna be in your hierarchy. So if you wanna delete it, you can just delete it. If you press E, that's a really quick shortcut to the eraser. And then you can just erase over things very similar to the window snipping tool. So that could be really useful if you make some observations on your asset. Say for example, highlighting certain pieces when you're going through the references. Control D, and then you can circle important places. And when you come back to that reference, you'll always know why you brought that reference inside of there. So you can combine that with notes. If you press Control N, uh, there's a new improved notes system. So you can change the size and also the text. So it might be useful just to annotate what this reference is about and why you were circling certain things. So on that subject of teaching and annotation, 
If you're unfamiliar with the channel, definitely subscribe. I'll cover things like games art, more specifically for characters. We also have a members section where every month I release a topic based on something that the members are asking for. We take it into a live workshop where we all work together with nice Discord integration. And then in the same month, we also do live monthly workshops for feedback. So bringing the works from the works in progress on our Discord and getting feedback from professional industry artist who's also been an art director and university lecturer on games art. So if you're interested in that, go and click the join button to see what the features are there. And there's also loads and loads of videos that have already been made that you can catch up on. At the same time, you can download loads of free resources. So for example, with topology PDFs, these have been very helpful for people. But as a game artist, you definitely want to understand read topology. Okay, so now on to my favorite feature and the coolest feature. And this is when you're studying things like anatomy, it's all well and good having 2D references, uh, but with muscles, they're forever changing. The skin is changing on top, the bones interaction with the muscle, the position of the character, what their posture is and sort of like what motion they're going through. So to get a real deeper understanding of things like anatomy or animation, there has to be the integration of movement. So thankfully, we now have GIFs. So classically, what we had to do is come into YouTube and just play something. I would usually play like some shoulder rolls to get an understanding and see where the muscles are moving, where the bones are going. For example, if you look at the back, there's lots of muscles that are disappearing and coming back in. So ideally you want this in pure F at the same time while you are drawing the anim annotations and maybe marking off some muscles that you see. So what we can do is actually take this video and convert it to a GIF. So it accepts a format that PureF likes. First, what we do is just find a very generic YouTube to MP4 downloader. This one's called Y2Mate. This might change in a couple of months. Copy the reference you found and then paste the URL in. Let's give you a couple of quality options. Might as well go for the highest quality if we want to see very specific things. After you've downloaded that, find an MP4 to GIF converter. I'm just using something called Easy Gift. GIF or GIF, however you call it, drag and drop the new GIF into the box and see it, how it converts it. So the video is in, you can set your start times and your end times. So ideally you kind of basically want to crop this. So play it to a point where he's uh, not messing around. Start the movement for the start time, you can use current position. So it sets it at three seconds. It could be that you just want him lifting his arms and then you could set the end, end time, export that as a GIF, and then just keep on re-exporting different versions depending on what side the animation is. For this one, I'm just gonna do the full playthrough. There's roughly 30 seconds of video there. Once that's done, I can click convert to GIF. So here's the GIF. This is what's gonna be shown inside of Pure Ref. Now's the time to just tailor it to your liking. So it might be that you wanna slow it down or speed it up or create different versions that are on different sections of the Pure F. I think it's pretty good as it is, so I'm gonna to come to click save. Okay, so once you've downloaded that, you can simply just drag and drop it into Pure F. And out of complete amazement, it's quite kind of kind of weird seeing a video inside of Pure F after using it for so many years. Uh, it's something that I've wanted for so, so long, so it's really great to see it. You can obviously play and pause this. So for example, you can watch the GIF play through get an understanding of like the collarbones interaction with the scaling muscles and the shoulders and the pectorals. And even with this button, there's a drop down to select each individual frame. So there might be a very specific point in time when the skin is folding over or there's a specific wrinkle that you want to copy. So this is going to be a great feature where you can just scroll through the frames and basically pick that. Then if you want to get a more overarching view of the movements, you can totally just speed that up. So double click it. And then down here, you've got a playback speed. So it's set by one. For example, we can set this by two and we can just see things a little bit faster. So even better than that, we can layer some more features on top of it. So remember, you can copy and paste this. But as we're now working with new systems inside of groups, you want to be extra careful. So when you do copy and paste this as we're zoomed into a group, make sure you double click it and the box is selected around that because otherwise you're duplicating the entire group and then it's going to make your files really big. So control C and control V. And then as we've got a different instance of this or a different copy, we can then have these at different playback speeds. So with a basic video, you can get a real good understanding of the anatomy and then use your references around to basically see what's happening. So with the draw feature, for example, we can actually start to educate ourselves a little bit more. So for example, all the muscles that are around the scapula, these are forever moving, vanishing and coming back into existence. And you can see that happening on the animation. So depending on where the scapula is retracting or protracting, or even the rotation of the arm, sometimes changes the muscles surrounding that bone. So really super useful. 
And as we can see, we've got this now in slow motion. So depending on the arm's position, maybe you're doing a very specific sculpt, we can pause that freeze frame, go through, and then reference that with some other assets. Another cool idea that you could potentially use while using PureF. So for example, we converted a video into a GIF. Now, sometimes when we're doing facial animations for characters, we need to use things like blend spaces. Now, if you're taking primary research and like getting shots for this, we'll often have many, many different pictures. So one feature is that you can do is you can obviously press back and forth to scroll through this, but that requires you to lose your space inside of PureRef. So what might be an idea is to take all of these images and then put it into a GIF sequence. So for example, picture to GIF, and you'll find exactly the same on, on Google. And that means that we'll just have a GIF playing through that goes through all our facial expressions we can change how fast they're happening and also which frame we're selecting. So it's almost a bit like a slideshow selector. There'll be a slight quality loss with the GIF, but the main thing that this is for is for understanding motion and why certain things come into existence like folds, bulges and stretches. I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and create really cool resources. So I'll send this out to everyone on the email list. So if you want to get those, make sure you've signed up. Anytime I make a free sort of resource or information on a new topic, I send it out to the emailer. So definitely make sure you're on that. If you're interested in torso anatomy and arm anatomy, I've got a video that I'll link here, which you can follow. And if you're more interested in very useful pieces of software to help you as a games artist, then I made another video, which I'll link here, that goes through about 10 different softwares, which will really excel your experience as a game artist. So download PureRef. And if you have the funds to do so, definitely give them a donation. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.